Welcome to The Money Huddle, a podcast that explores financial topics for families and small business owners. Hosted by Michael Baker and Ross Marinell. All opinions expressed by Michael and Ross or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and may not reflect the opinions of Planners Alliance. The podcast recording is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Planners Alliance may maintain positions and securities discussed on the program. Hey, and welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about something that a lot of people, I think, need to know. And it's a topic that's often covered in a lot of financial media. I see articles in different magazines, um, in newspapers from time to time. But today, I'm going to help you answer the question, how should I hire a financial advisor? And um, so before we get started, I want to just share right out the bat that everything I'm going to share with you today is my opinion. And so it, it belongs to me. You feel free to disagree. But I have been uh, in the industry now for almost 10 years. I've met a lot of wonderful people, had a lot of conversations, read a lot of things about uh, this topic. And so I wanted to shine uh, just a little bit of light uh, from the industry's perspective uh, onto uh, those who might be seeking financial advice or wanting to hire a financial professional. So that being said, uh, I will try my best to distill this down to something that's very easy to really understand and not overcomplicate it because um, our business, as you might expect, can be very complicated at times. Um, and it's one of the things that I think is sometimes uh, a little frustrating even for us in the business is how complicated things can be. But um, So I'm going to try my best to simplify this down where it's really easy for you to understand and where um, hopefully you will have some, you will be equipped with a few questions of your own to be able to ask anyone that you're interviewing. All right, so let's get started. Number one for me, um, again, these are my, these are five ways uh, that I think you should, five areas that you should look at for hiring an advisor. So number one for me, uh, I would ask them, you know, are they held to a fiduciary standard of care? And what that means is or someone who's acting as a fiduciary or acting um, or held to a fiduciary standard, I should say, um, that's a better way to say it, is they are required or obligated to put your interest as a client ahead of their own. So, um, or if they have a conflict of interest, they are required to disclose that. And, and if the conflict is uh, not agreeable or it's um, significant enough, it may mean that they need to decline the engagement. So um, I would ask if, if you know, they are held to a fiduciary standard and get them to answer that to you. Um, because believe it or not, um, while I think that the vast majority of folks that work in our business genuinely want to help people and genuinely want to um, do the best for clients, not everybody is held to that fiduciary standard. Some people are only held to a suitability standard, which is a lower standard of care. Um, so what we want is we want someone that's held to a fiduciary standard of care. Um, that's number one. I would ask them that. And if they are not held to a fiduciary standard of care, uh, to me, that would possibly be a deal breaker. You have to dig a little deeper and find out um, exactly what you were trying to accomplish with that planning engagement. So fiduciary standard of care, number one. Number two, I would ask them um, about their competence. Um, so uh, a couple Many months back, uh, the Department of Labor was uh, was attempting to create some new regulation, and uh, one of the things that was talked about was the fiduciary standard of care, which I just uh, explained to you. But they defined um, a fiduciary standard of care of not only not only um, being obligated to put the client's interest ahead of their own, it also meant that they need to, needed to know what was actually in the client's best interest. And that was great for me um, to see that because what they're trying to do is they're trying to instill that there needs to be a level of competence uh, present when someone is engaging in uh, planning advice or 
hiring someone to give them some some type of planning services. So competency, I would ask them what's been their what's their level of experience. Um, do they have any um, advanced uh, designations with planning? Um, one easy way um, to hit the the easy button, if you will, is to look at. Um, do they have what's called the, the CFP marks? Are they a certified financial planner professional? Uh, that is a designation that is given out by the CFP board. And the way that one attains that is you are required to uh, go through uh, some rigorous academic study. You have to have a certain amount of industry experience and you have to pass a board exam to become certified. And then once you are certified to maintain your certification, um, you're required to, to maintain a certain level of continuing education on an ongoing, uh, ongoing basis. So that, um, that is an easy way if you want to find someone who is a got a, at least a minimum uh, level of competence and they're also held to a fiduciary standard because the CFP board requires that CFPs are held to a fiduciary standard. That's an easy way to knock out number one and number two. All right, so competency. Uh, then the next thing I would ask uh, you to look at is not just their level of competency because there are a lot of professionals in our business that have been in the business for years and years and they're quite competent. So taking it one step further, number three is what is their level of specialty? What is their specialization? Uh, there are tons and tons of folks that you can go to if you're wanting investment advice, right? If you're wanting to, you know, hey, I've got some money and I want to invest it. Um, you know, we are close to Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte is a financial town. Uh, sometimes I feel like I can throw a rock and hit three other financial professionals. Uh, so uh, th depending on where you live, that you could be very saturated with financial professionals. Um, sometimes you may not have uh, as much of a choice, but technology is opening up the world. So where that, you know, a lot of plans Planners and planning teams are even able to work virtually. So these questions, whether it's somebody that you're going to sit down in front of face to face, uh, should also apply if you're thinking about somebody virtually. Okay, so specialty. That's a big thing for me because, you know, uh, someone who is a financial professional and most of their clientele is, you know, let's let's say that they work specifically with dentists and, you know, they want to know all the ins and outs of, you know, how a dental practice runs, the, you know, the HR, the benefits that come with um, needing to hire, you know, dental assistants and uh, other employees to help run that practice, the di ty different types of insurances that are required and, and needed for um, dentists specifically as a niche Someone that that works in you know the, that type of field may not be the best person if you're looking to you know retire, right? So someone that wants to retire may be trying to find someone who specializes in retirement income distribution or retirement income planning. And um, what I would what I would advise anyone who is looking for um, some type of specific planning engagement, ask a little bit more about the planner specialty, what, what areas, not just they're competent in, but what are, where do they specialize? So the, to give you a great example, um, my, my wife and I, we've, we've got you know, two small kids. And, you know, if you're a parent of small children, you know, like, most likely uh, you've dealt with ear infections. So we, we, like most parents, first place we go was the pediatrician. We go to the pediatrician and, you know, they get prescribed some antibiotics and we hope the ear infection clears up. Well, after we've been to the pediatrician a few times, the pediatrician says, you know what, we can't do anything else for you. You need to schedule an appointment with uh, the ENT. Now, you know, so, so now we're going to, you know, the ENT specialist who specializes in, you know, ears, nose and throat, all those, uh, you know, all those other, you know, areas that the pediatrician as a general practitioner can help us to a certain degree. They want us to go see the specialist, the ENT doctor. And so we go to the ENT doctor. Turns out um, they think that um, we need to get tubes in, in both of our kids' ears. So that's what we do, right? And so we go to the specialist because we had a very specific need. We needed a higher level of competency than just the general practitioner, right? So that's what I'm talking about is to, when it comes to you know finding someone who um, specializes in something specific uh, that you're looking for. All right, so, uh, so we, what do we have? We have um, fiduciary level of care. 
We have their competency level, you know, level, you know, years of experience in the business, um, what type of clients they serve, you know, what's been their experience as a planner. Um, then number three is their level of specialty, right? And and what I will tell you, and, and this is something that that I think uh, should not be discounted. I know a great number of uh, professionals with a ton of integrity, and someone who is a fiduciary, someone who has a specialty, has a niche. Um, they will very is I will say most likely if they don't serve folks like you because that's not their specialty, they will either tell you, hey, I wish I could help you, but that's just not what we specialize in, or they might know someone who is a specialist. So don't be discouraged if you go to meet with somebody and they don't specialize in what you need. Okay, they still may be a, a very valuable resource. And, and one way I would uh, you know, say that one more, a different way is sometimes the planner not, is, is not necessarily a specialist in that area, but they are phenomenal at assembling a team of professionals that can help you. So for example, you know, you're a small business owner, you've got tax needs, you've got insurance needs, you might have uh, benefits for your employees needs, you know, you, you might have your own personal retirement planning needs, you might have, you know, health insurance and a, a really good financial planning team, um, could possibly be a hub where they know a tax specialist. They know an attorney that specializes in uh, employment law. They know, um, you know, great HR benefits people or, or, or other professionals that can put together benefits packages for your employees, and they can uh, be the hub that assembles a team. So um, let's not discount that just because they don't do exactly what you your biggest need at the moment is. They still may be a tremendous resource, so I don't want to discount that. All right, number four, uh, I think this is r truly um, something that I, I feel passionate about, is do you like the person? Um, do you get along? Do you feel like when you sit down with them, do you feel like, hey, this is a person that um, I like, I trust, and I can see an ongoing relationship, working relationship being uh, very fruitful uh, in the future? If you don't feel that, if you don't get that warm and fuzzy on the inside when you sit down with them, then to me, a lot of the other stuff doesn't matter. And so I'll, I'll, I'll explain it this way. You know, think of you know, think of somebody that that you're uh, you know a good friend with that that you that you've known for a while. You you trust them. You know they're not the most you know a, a genius, but they if they give you an opinion about something or they want to weigh in on something that you you value their their advice, right? We all have people like that in our lives where you know they may not be a pro on something, but if they say, hey, you know what, Joe's a good guy, then you're likely going to just trust that Joe's a good guy because your friend is saying that. Okay. So when you start sitting down with a financial professional, you know, someone who's a fiduciary, someone who's got a specialty and is competent, you know, there could be times where they, they are required to tell you some things that you don't want to hear. They may have to have some difficult conversations with you and disagreements might arise. Okay. Um, if you, you don't like that person, it is highly, highly likely that you're going to discount their advice because you don't like them, right? So if you think about it in this way, like if somebody, if, if somebody you don't like says something, you're like, well, I don't really care about them anyway. You don't want to have that type of relationship with a, your financial planner or a professional, someone that's trying to help you truly help you guide your future because they might be trying to explain to you something that um, is very important and you want to have a good enough relationship where there's a comfort level where they can have those difficult conversations. doesn't mean it gets combative. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm simply saying, hey, um, you want to have somebody that feels comfortable telling you things that you may not want to hear so that so that the best work for the client for you can be done and i think that that just happens in an, that happens in an environment where you feel you don't want to feel like oh i got to go see so and so because uh oh, you know it's just they call for a review or oh you know they want to talk about this if you don't feel great i mean i'm not saying skipping to their office of course um we would love that but you know we understand that sometimes financial matters can be tough but um you'd also you don't want it to be like 
drudgery either going to see your financial advisor if it if if it's not a good fit personality wise that's going to continue to rear its head over the course of the the relationship and what you want is you want it to be uh you know there be mutual respect and also a, a degree of relationship there where um you don't have to be best friends but you also want to be able to have a good working relationship together so if you don't like somebody or let me say it this way this is perhaps even more important if your spouse doesn't like that person that could be trouble in the long run as well so i'll say that again um, you you may really like that person but if your spouse doesn't like that person it could be a real challenge because the spouse is not going to want to go to the meetings they're not going to want to participate and they will might be the one where when you're getting this advice they're ah, i don't i don't want to do that because they don't like the planner so you want to try to find somebody that you like you trust and you feel like you can work with on an ongoing basis because planning is a process. And so you want that relationship to be something that you can, you know, build, you know, over time. All right. So that's my, my number four is I, to me, I think you should, um, you should work with somebody that you like. And, and we do that too, by the way. Um, I know a lot of really good professional uh, teams that they will often look for clients that they feel like they can serve because it's a good personality match for them. So remember, it's a two way street. Um, it's not just, you know, you know, does, do you guys like the planner? Because a lot of planners now, um, they're looking for people that they feel like they mesh well with, uh, from a person, personality level as well. And then number five, let's so so we let's let's go let's review really quick. We have uh, are they a fiduciary or are they held to a fiduciary standard of care? What's their level of competence? You know, you know, do they have experience? What's been their experience? Uh, number three, what's their specialty? Do they have some specialized areas that they specific that they focus on specifically and excel at? Are they, you know, are they the best at something in in the area? Okay, number four. Do you do you like the person? Do you do you feel like there's you know a good fit there? And then number five, uh, this is this is the big one. This is usually where people start. Okay, I put it at the end because to me, everything else that I listed first matters before this. Most people, a lot of people, they want to start with compensation. How much is this going to cost? What do you charge? What's your fee? How do you get paid? It's one of the first questions a lot of folks want to ask because you just you, we, we're people you know we're people we, we, we want to know like hey is this is this going to cost us an arm and a leg or you know are you going to be you know more expensive than we even thought are you less expensive than we thought i mean that's just usually top of mind when we start thinking about money we think about cost and so i saved it for the last piece because to me all the other components matter more Sure, you may end up making a decision based on cost, but if all the other things aren't in, you know, in, in, in our world, world, if they're not in good order, then to me, the compensation piece doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, so number five, compensation, how do you get paid? And the way I say this is, um, there are so many different compensation models in our business it would be painstaking and boring to try to go through each and every one. So the way I usually answer this question uh, or, or would have you um, ask this question is, you know, do they have a compensation model that fits your needs or your desire? Okay. So um, what the way I would tell anyone to look at that is how flexible is their compensation. And I don't mean like, are they willing to adjust their fee or are they willing to give a discount or something like that? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying, um, how many different ways are they able to be paid? So for example, um, there are some planners in our business, they are truly fee only financial planners. And when I say fee only, what I'm referring to specifically is you go in, you have an engagement with them. They charge you a fee for their work. And that's it. 
They don't manage money. They don't have managed or advisory assets. They don't do insurance or sell insurance. They make no commissions on mutual funds or, or REITs or any other type of product. It's truly a fee-only engagement, um, and they may get paid hourly. They may get paid, you know, you know, half, you know, half of their fee up front, and then half when they complete it. They're you know, how many, however many different ways you can imagine it. But the only way that they're going to get paid is through a fee. It's usually a very straightforward, um, you know, way that they would be compensated. Okay. Then um, another way that, um, you know, another compensation model that's uh, pretty prominent in our business is what I refer to as fee-based. Okay. And so fee-based to me uh, means that, you know, they can charge you a fee for planning like the fee only planners would. But they also have, um, you know, ad an advisory business where they do uh, portfolio or wealth management for clients where they charge an advisory fee or, or an at what we call in our industry is called an ad assets under management fee. And so they, that's usually a percentage of, you know, whatever they're managing for you. And they'll have a fee breakdown for how, you know, how they charge those fees and how those fees are billed to clients. Um, all of this stuff, by the way, should be disclosed to you in black and white very plainly uh, up front before you decide on any type of engagement. I'm just explaining to you the different types of compensation. So um, you've got a fee only where you, hey, hey, here's what the engagement is going to look like. This is what we're going to do for you. Uh, this is our process. Um, and this is how we get paid. You sign up. You pay them their fee. And then either the engagement concludes or you've agreed to extend the engagement um, into, you know, perpetuity or the next year, however that enga specific engagement works. Then you have a uh, fee based where you may, tr you may pay a planning fee and then they have an advisory type of fee or an assets under management fee. Then um, there's a, a compensation model where um, it's, it's called a fee and commission where they can charge a financial planning fee. They may have advisory business where they can, you know, charge a fee for portfolios that are under management and they may offer different products where they make a commission. They may, you know, have uh, mutual funds that they sell that, you know, pay, pay an upfront commission. They may have other products, investment products where they get paid a commission to sell insurance. Some, um, some teams will sell insurance like, you know, and, and that usually is where, you know, everyone in our industry starts throwing mud at everybody else because, um, a lot of the fee only or fee based folks don't like anyone that makes a commission, um, or, or disagree with folks who earn a commission for selling products because they feel like it's sales and not, you know, financial planning. And, and so to me, the way I see it is, well, if someone needs term insurance or they need a life insurance policy, or they're trying to do some estate planning, or, you know, they, they want to buy a long-term care policy or, you know, any other, you know, derivative of that, well, insurance, um, the only way that a lot of insurance products pay is through a commission. Uh, so if you're trying to do a holistic, comprehensive plan, um, you know, I think insurance is, should be part of that. So that's one way um, that it can be included. So my thoughts are on that is that you know, you have, um, you know, someone that's got a model like that where they've got, you know, commission-based uh, compensation, they've got advisory or fee-based compensation, and they may also have a way to charge you a fee for planning. They have a, you know, a flexible model where you as the client can decide exactly what you want to do. So um, I think it matters that the compensation, uh, f their, the compensation model of the advisory team or the planning team that you're working with fits your needs. So, for, so to give you an example, if you want to go in and you want to work with somebody but you don't know what you need, you say, hey, listen, here's what I, I really need. I just need um, to get my ducks in a row. I've got, um, you know, accounts everywhere. I'm not organized. I really want to get my financial house in order. What I really need is a financial plan. Okay. Um, you know, to me, you would want to find somebody that can charge you a fee to put together a plan. Right. A lot of teams don't do that. They'll say, Hey, we'll put together, a, we'll put together a plan for you. Don't worry. And then the plan is, is that you buy all your stuff, you move all your money and everything goes to that firm. You know, I mean, it happens and, and, and you may be totally fine with that. But 
way I like to start is you start with the plan and then you move to implementation because you may not need to implement everything with them. And if the only way, so this goes back to the compensation, if the only way that they can be compensated is that you have to move all your money to them or you have to buy all your insurance through them, then, you know, it may not be the best fit from a compensation model standpoint, because I think you want someone, you would like to have someone who is trying to be as objective as possible for your specific needs. So it's hard to be objective, and a, and a lot of people claim to be. It's really hard to be objective if you're basically doing work for free and you're hoping that they do business with you. So you as a client, I mean, if they have the way to charge you, you know, charge you a planning fee, then that's one way where you know that the professional is going to be compensated and they're going to hopefully put together a great plan for you. And then you as the client then get to choose how you want to implement that plan. Does that professional team, do they have um, solutions that you can implement with them? Or do they say, hey, um, we're not the best for this. Here's where you should go. And they have some recommendations. So um, that's that's my take on it. Um, of course, uh, we'll probably talk more about compensation in another video because it's a hot topic. Um, but what I will leave you with this is this, is that professionals get paid, okay? Um, if you're wanting somebody, you know, if you want all these other things, right? If you want somebody that's going to act in your best interest as a fiduciary, who's competent, who specializes in something, you like that person, that person deserves to get paid, all right? They, they, um, they do get paid and because, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. The key is, is finding the compensation model that fits your needs and that works for you. So um, those are my thoughts um, on how to hire a financial advisor. Uh, I'm sure there are things that I have left out, some things that I've forgotten. But, you know, as I get asked this question from time to time from friends, you know, I usually ask them like, well, why are you asking me? Don't you know what I do for a living? But what am I like chop liver? But um, no, uh, I do get asked that question from time to time. And, and so that's usually the way, you know, I try to, you know, shorter than this video, of course, but try to break it down to them. These are the things you need to look for. Um, and, and all of that is a starting point. You know, there could be other things that are specific to your situation, specific to your need that go above and beyond even my five points that I've given. But hopefully this will be a nice blueprint uh, coming from someone in the industry, coming from someone who's got uh, credentials and experience. Uh, hopefully this will be, uh, my, my goal is that this will help you uh, find that planner that you need for you. All right. Can't wait to see you next time. If you like what you heard, please uh, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button, share the video, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks.